So when we look at our traditions, especially our mystical traditions, most of them actually struggle quite a bit with the relationship between contemplation or a deep meditative experience and action in the world. The Christian tradition certainly has struggled with that because for a long time, for many, many centuries, we were told that the goal of spiritual life was to essentially check out and get absorbed into the reality of God, reality that is beyond name and etc. And in my experience, and I think that I learned this primarily through my work with homeless youth, not only action can be related to contemplation, action can become contemplation. And the way that I discovered it was through my service that I did with homeless youth on the streets of uh, New York City. I learned contemplative prayer uh, in different monasteries, but I didn't really discover what prayer is until I had this one specific experience with homeless youth. And that was initially when my friend and I co-founded the Reciprocity Foundation, which spent many, many years working with homeless youth and is still very much alive in New York City. Initially, I thought that my role there was to essentially utilize whatever therapeutic techniques I learned and to show up and help people fix their lives. And after a couple of years or so, I discovered that that was actually not working and that that was maybe appropriate or even helpful in some cases, but that wasn't necessarily my vocation. My vocation was quite different. It was about showing up for each person who came to our center in the same way that I would show up for prayer. And how do I show up for prayer? I show up for prayer acknowledging what is alive in me at this particular moment. I bring all of that into the presence of the divine. I name what's present and then I just sit there in this state of receptivity and openness, waiting, trusting that God can somehow descend into my life and take everything that I'm bringing, which is mostly my difficulties, my heartbreaks, uh, and somehow transfigure that into something that could become my gift to the world. And so this is, I think, in a Christian tradition, what contemplative prayer is. Uh, it's learning how to be in a state of receptivity and consent. So that impulse of God that is longing to be present in our lives can be freed and can begin to work in us. So we have to say yes to it and then through us also work in the world. And so the experience that I had with homeless youth when I started showing up in that way things changed for me. And so every morning I would prepare, I would practice, and then I would show up for every person who came for help to our center, just being there in a state of curious not knowing, putting everything that I know aside. And what that meant was that to truly show up for them in that way meant to be present to their pain without any buffers. It meant that I had to accompany them into the depths of their pain, their abuse, their heartbreak. And I noticed when, you know, that wasn't certainly a kind of a very professional way of accompanying someone through healing. But when I would do that, I realized that, you know, I was often right there with them breaking into pieces. But when that happened, every time I realized that Underneath it all, there was this something, this presence of God that would just kind of show up in our midst. And that the only thing that we had to do was to just be open to it and say yes to it. 
so it could begin to do the work of healing. And when that happened, it wasn't really clear who was helping whom. And so I think that for me, that's what engaged contemplation is or contemplative activism is. St. Augustine has this beautiful description where he says that in the innermost cabin of our hearts, there is a sleeping Christ there. In many ways, through our spiritual practice and through our cultivation of devotion and etc., our goal is to wake that Christ up so he can begin to live and work and love through us. And there is also a teaching attributed to St. Teresa of Avila, even though she, I think, never really said it, uh, where she said, Christ has no body but yours on this earth, no heart but yours, no hands by yours. And I love that because that is my experience of prayer, that as one of my Sufi mentors a long time ago said, that the goal of spiritual life is to let God live through me as much as possible. And so to me, that's what connects contemplation and action. Contemplation is about receptivity and saying yes, and action is God acting in us and through us, if we consent. And then, of course, it doesn't mean that we can't be strategic in the world. It doesn't mean that we shouldn't have political commitments. It doesn't mean that, that we should just kind of sit and wait and not build organizations or get involved in movements. All of that, I think, is very much needed. But the foundation of our being needs to be that experience of letting God live through us as much as possible.